Good evening. Mainly what we're here to talk about tonight is the new Excel add-on that is a, I guess, a collaboration between CCP and Microsoft. And all you do is, once it's available to everybody, you just go to your Excel. It works on the free version of Excel, which is only web-based. It also works on the web-based if you pay, and it also works on the standalone program if you pay for Excel. And it works on Mac and PC. I don't know about Linux. Sorry. But basically, you put the add-in in, and then you can log in through your SSO, and then you have access to all of your, not all of it, but a fair amount of your in-game stuff. And... A lot of you that do industry and go to places like Eve Cookbook or Lazy Blacksmith or Fuzzy's website and stuff, a lot of this stuff is going to look real familiar to you. And this is kind of a way that smaller people, that the smaller industry that don't necessarily can't isn't real Excel savvy that you can get this information and keep it in your own spreadsheets really easy. You could import some of the pricing data and stuff to Google Sheets, but it was really clunky and you had to go through an API from a third party website and it, it was kind of a pain. This you'll be able to port it directly into Excel. So the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you the Excel sheet that they give you, it's going to come along with the add-in and that way you'll have it available to you and it's kind of a way to get your feet wet. So let me show you that right now. And this is basically what it looks like. I think I had a Dominix in there instead of an Armageddon, but I put an Armageddon up there just to give you an idea what it looks like. And here is what the where oh, there's insert where is the well, the plugin doesn't show up hmm. that's kind of weird insert my add-ins there it is okay so here's what the add-in looks like when it shows and can you yeah you can see that okay so over here on the right you'll see my name i'm logged in and it has a list of functions that you can spit out for that character directly. So we'll talk about this in a minute, but anything that you do from this area, it will automatically fill in the data for your specific character that you're looking at. You use any of these functions down here, public, character, or corporation, then you're gonna have to know a little bit more data. And, uh, oh, is this showing up? No, it's not showing up. Hold on, let me make this a little bit smaller. Okay, you can see it now. So you're talking about this stuff over here. This is what I was talking about. This is the functions thing for your actual pilot. And then down here is public endpoints, character endpoints, and corporation. Corporation obviously only works if the character has the roles for it. So like if you're a director or you have accountant permissions, you can see the wallet, that kind of stuff. That stuff I'm not really gonna go over now. More dealing with the public stuff and some of the character stuff right now. So if you look, you start off and all you have to do is type the name in. Now this is the way that they've pre-made this sheet. Anything in orange is something you can type in. And anything that's in this yellow along this line right here is stuff where you get to select. So I've already typed in Armageddon. We're going to do one run. The product value, this is the in what's called an EIV, estimated item value. And it's what they use to determine the install cost for it. And that's, we'll, we'll look at it on a different sheet of how this comes up. I'm just showing you the pre-made one. This is the job materials cost. Now this is at ME0 building in a, in a station. So we'll go over that. And right now, anytime you see a number in parentheses, that's like the counting version of a negative number. So this means you would lose $43 million 
isk building it like this. And of course the margin is, is negative too. So the first thing we want to do, we're going to be building an ME10. So you click on here and you scroll down and you choose ME10. And time efficiency doesn't matter for price, but we'll say you're building an ME or TE14. The structure roll bonus, if you're in a station, it's going to be zero. If you're building in any citadel, all citadel structures made for industry have a base 1%. So a Rotaru, an Asbel, or a Sadio all have a base of, of 1. Now your rig bonus, if, you, if it's rigged, it's either 2 or 2.4. 2 is a Tech 1 rig, 2.4 is a Tech 2 rig. So we'll just say it's rigged for a Tech 1 rig. And then your modifier, if it's in high sec, your modifier is 1. Low sec, your modifier is 1.9. Null sec, your modifier is 2.1. So we'll say that we're going to build these in low sec. Okay, and you notice every time you change something this, change something here, all these numbers change instantly because it's all calculating this on the fly. Nick, the, the add-in is not actually within the client. The add-in is in Excel. It accesses, you don't even have to have a client running. Now, I, I do for, so we can look at Jita, but this is basically the same thing as logging in to ESI. That's a, a good way to put it. It's the way that I look at it, and I'm not real savvy on this type of stuff. But essentially, you're logging in just like you'd log into the client, except for instead of seeing the information in a client, you're able to access this information and put it directly into a spreadsheet instead of in the client. Yes, yeah, it's part of, so the way that you actually get it, if you go to insert and then get add-ins, there's a whole bunch of add-ins right here that I'm scrolling, but you can't see. Okay, so right here in this get add-ins section right here, if you click on this, a big list comes up and you can add in all kinds of stuff. You need a special code to get the Eve one if you're in the beta, if you're in the beta program. Once it's available, you'll just be able to type in Eve online or whatever, and it will, and you'll be able to download it. And then once it's out of beta and anyone can get it, it will look just like this on the right. They'll have an Eve button, log out. And if you want to add a character, you can click on add a character, log in. If you have 2FA, it'll ask you for your 2FA. And then you can choose your character and hit authorize, and it will show up in here. And you log in through Eve, just like you're, it'll look just like you're adding something to the launcher. It, it won't be any different to you other than it's in a little window and not in the launcher. Okay. And if you click this little X right here, then that goes away. So you can see the rest of the spreadsheet and then you can get it back at any time. Okay. So we're going to be back to the spreadsheet. We're going to be making this in low sec. So. The other thing is I pre-filled in these numbers here. This is the buy order price of all these items in JITA. So if you went to JITA right now and you just bought, put buy orders up for all of these items, this is what you'd put the buy, up, buy orders up for. So if you build one right now, you would have a margin of 3.78%. Now, one thing this does not do is it doesn't take into account your install cost. I don't think it does. No, it does not. It does not take into account install cost. So there may be, depending on where you're building it, if you're in low sec, you're probably not going to have a whole lot of install cost. Now, the one thing we were talking about on our show with Nick before, the the, the whole run bonus thing. So one thing I just want to go over real quick is right now it looks like you're making 3.78%. If we go up and we do, say, 20 runs, and you look, now your profit has jumped a little over 4%. And that's just due to the run bonus. As you make more and more runs, you'll use less items per run. So that's where you can start multiplying it. And the other thing is, is it 
gives you a job duration. So for 20 runs, that's four days, four hours. Yeah. Anyway, just this is some of the, the pre-made stuff. So one of the other tabs on the pre-made is this thing called SD types. And if you look, the one thing I've done is I made this front row. I stickied the, the top so you can always see what's going on here. But if you look, there's you probably have heard people talk about this type ID, group ID, type name, this kind of stuff. And this is all numbers of how stuff was added to the game all the way back when. You can see Dominic's is 999. That one I know for sure. So we'll scroll to that one. And 999 is a Dominic's blueprint. And the Dominic's ship is 645, I believe. Yeah. So the Domus, Dominic's is 645. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom and you look, you can see some of the new stuff in the game is, you know, 300 and... 60,000. So that's how far we've gotten all the way from 645. Anyway, so we'll go back down here to the small numbers where it's easy to deal with. So we're going to we're going to go to this sheet right here. Oh, okay, I'd been messing around with this. Yeah, let me just do all this and we'll delete it and here and we'll delete that real quick and here we'll delete this. Okay, so now we have a fresh sheet. How do I get back? Let me get the add-in back up. Okay. So, one thing that's really neat, if you go to your character now, I'm on a fresh sheet, and I want to know what my skills are. I click on skills, and it says, hey, I'm busy. And now it lists every skill that Kenneth has injected. Okay, that's all it has right now is every skill that's injected for me. Now, if you see this little stacked icon here, when I mouse over it, you can kind of see it glimmer a little bit. If you click on that, then it gives you this pop-up. And it'll tell you my active skill level. The data type is a skill, the ID. Remember we talked about the SD types. That's the, that's the ID. How many skill points I have in the skill, which is... Level five, it's fully trained, and I'm trained to five. Now, the difference here, the trained skill level and the active skill level is the difference between alpha and omega. If you're trained to five, and say this count was alpha, but for an alpha, the frigate, well, frigate can get trained to five, but say it could only be trained to three for an alpha, and this account was alpha, the trained skill would be five, but the active skill would only be three. That's what that means by that. Okay. So if you notice too, now that's if you click over this little stack symbol. If you go to the right, there's a little clipboard. And it already comes up, insert data. If I click on that clipboard, I can choose any of that data that we just saw on that little placard. And I can say train skill level. And if you look, it says my train skill level is five. Now, if I want to do that for all my skills, like most things in Excel, I can copy that and then scroll all the way down to the bottom. And I can paste that same function to every block. And now it lists every skill and what I have it trained to in the game. So interplanetary consolidation, yeah, I only have that one trained to one. Rigging skills, most of them are four. No, I don't know how they're situated. I think they're in ID order. No, because Eden Com Battleship's there. I don't know what order they're in. And I tried to sort, but it was giving me a hard time about sorting. So that's something that I'll probably work with. And if one of you guys happens to figure it out, let me know. But that's what you can do with this kind of stuff. And then if you want to know something else on top of that, so say you want to know the skill points. If you click on skill points now, it just populates the next column over. And you can do the same thing where you can copy that and then scroll all the way down to the bottom and highlight all those and paste. 
and now it gives you the skill points for every single one of those skills, what you have them trained to. And then you could always do a max and get a and get a different value in or you know the the delta value that kind of stuff. Okay, a couple other things. Let's see. It's got the basic character card. So if you just look, it's got Kenneth Feld. If you click on the little person, you see my in-game avatar, what alliance I'm in, and anywhere that you see one of those little stack things, you can click on it, and then it goes just like in-game where you can click on a person's character, and then you click on their corp, and then it'll have the alliance there. You can click on the alliance. And now all this stuff has the crazy things like the executor corporation ID is just just fancy number 5818164421. Well, you can take that number and click on it and it will populate right here. But then if you take and we copy this and you go down to mm, let's see is it groups? No, categories maybe? No. Oh, that's going to be a different data. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, you can't do that in here. Sorry about that. But you could always go to like Eve Who and look up this number and figure out what it is. But the other thing, let me delete that. So the other thing is when you click on the name, just like before, if you go to the right, you get the clipboard. So if you want to know anything about Kenneth or where he is, like the image, you click on the image, now it has the little avatar in that block. Now it's pretty small, you can't see it, but you can tell it's there. Same thing if you click on it, my birthday and Eve. Kenneth's birthday is 11-21-09, p.m. Yeah, all, all this stuff's available to you. And it's all this stuff that's right here is the same thing as clicking on this and scrolling down. It's the same exact data right here it's just this is in form that you can read it right here and if you click on this one and put it in here then it will add it to the spreadsheet yeah freedom tower yeah i guess if you work excel for work then this might be pretty bad but for some of us it's pretty cool and i'm by no means an excel expert but just kind of going over how it works and, and what it looks like. And I'm sure there's going to be people making some for fantastic spreadsheets out of this. It's probably not going to be me, at least not right away. But I'm just trying to, to get people familiar with the data and the different functions it has. And then you can go from there. So one thing we'll do now now that we've seen the character functions we'll go down here and we'll do some of the public or character functions so we'll start with the public here i'm actually let me make another sheet real quick okay so now we're at a blank sheet and we'll start with c3 here one thing that it has if you go right here to blueprint and says try it out so it pre-fills in the Dominic's blueprint, but you can do like 15271. I think that's a revelation. No. 15721, maybe? No. Okay, that one's not going to have. Okay, so then we go back down to SD types, and you hit find, and you put in revelation, and we'll find the... What? How did I spell it wrong? Let's see here. There we go. Okay. I wasn't clicked in there. Okay. So that's the actual dreadnought. So, okay. Revelation. We'll get the whole thing in here. Okay. So that, okay. So the revelation 19721. Okay. So now we close out of here, go back into here and we go, I was close. 19721. Okay, so now we're at the revelation. So we'll make this a little bit wider. And now, just like we said before, we can go here and we can get the manufacturing. Manufacturing takes 19 materials, takes one skill, one product, and then that's the base time. 
So we'll make this one a little bit wider. Same thing if you go here and you click on this end one. Now we'll look at materials. And those are all the materials that it takes to build a revelation. Okay. Now, then you can go to here, click on this one, and you only get quantity and type. Okay. You can't break this one down any further. This is where this little thing right here that says blueprint explosion comes in. So if you go, let's see, I'll go back here. It's 19721. So I'm going to start another sheet just, just so we can show you. And then if you hit blueprint explosion and try it out, it's going to come up with the same Dominic's, but we're going to 19721. Now it's busy. It's anytime it says it's busy, it's thinking about it. So now we'll make this a little bit wider and we're going to click on that box and come over here and we're going to tell it to give us the components. Now this is all the components that it takes to build a revelation. And if we go here and we actually, yeah, let's see, make this one wider. We'll make this one wider. Okay. So this one, the first one is the components. The second one is all the materials it takes. And you notice it has C3 dot materials. That's, we can, we can just add that in. And then for right here, we can do the same thing. And just like here, it has that equals C3 dot materials. If I go here and go equals C3 dot E, Notice it comes up excess materials. I can just click on that, double click, sorry, and hit enter and it fills in the excess materials. Or I could have gone back over to here and clicked on this and chosen excess materials. You can fill it in either way, that's perfectly fine. Now, what's excess materials? This is something that people don't think about. Eve Cookbook has this in there but most of the other websites do not. Excuse me for a minute. And this, if you make a revelation and you're just going to make one revelation, the minimum that you can make of certain things is going to be more than what's used in the ship. To give you a for instance, if you look at this fermionic condensates right here, the minimum amount that you're going to make, let's see, how many does it actually use? Where's the, I think it's 200. Oh, it's baked in. Okay. Yeah. But the minimum that you can make is 200, but it only uses 50. So you have 150 left over. So that's quite a bit of isk that you're going to have left over. If you're just going to build one and you want to build it from all raw materials. Now, if you're building a whole bunch of them, or you build ships as you go, the excess materials aren't that big of a deal. But at certain times, it can be a big deal. Okay, Ghost is asking about live prices. Yes and no, kind of. Let me see if it got put in here. So for public, oh, it does say market order streaming. I don't know if that got put in or not. We can go over that in a minute. I'll, I'll try and I'll try and get to that before the end. The reason it, it it's with name, it probably means that you're not putting in the right type ID. Let me see if I can um if I can make this work. See so if I just take this and I don't put a type ID in, and just leave the the parentheses blank. Oh no, then it says value. I know it. I've seen name earlier, but it, it basically means that there's an error there. You haven't, you haven't put in the data that it's looking for and it will tell you. So like if you, if you just try and put in like equals Eve online, then it comes up with all the different things that you can do. So you can do a blueprint. And then it says get blueprint by ID. So if I double click on this, then it's going to tell me that I need to put in a blueprint or type ID. 
So I don't I don't know. Can you put in Ferox C and see if it will? Uh, ah, okay. So that's when it came up name. So you can't put the name of the ship in there. You have to put the ID, and that's where you have to go back to this SD types. And then we can hit Control F, find, look for Ferox, and find next. So that's a Cosmos Ferox. That's not what we're looking for. No, that's not the one we're looking for. Oh, wow, there's a whole bunch of different Ferroxes. I probably should have. Yeah, that's a skin, skins, more skins. Goodness gracious. Okay, here, let's do this. BL. So, oh, blue tiger skin. Good grief. Okay, Ferox Blueprint. So that's 16228. So if we go back to the sheet we we're looking at, instead of name, if I type in 16228, then it comes up with the blueprint, and then you can click here and get the invention data or the material data, manufacturing, that kind of stuff from there. Okay, does that make sense? So, yeah, that's you were probably putting a name in there. Now, I think if you just want to see the ship, I'm not sure how. I haven't really tried that because I always use the type IDs. So... If you click on type and try it, yeah, let me see if Ferox would work in here. Ferox. Nope. Yeah, it comes up name as well. Yeah. So it wants the it wants the type IDs for all this stuff. And honestly, it's it's one of the harder things that I had to get used to. One thing that makes it super easy, and I don't have a way to do it right now, but if you go to Eve Who dot com and if you go there and you type your name in and you search for your name the url that's going to return is like evehoo.com slash something and then a bunch of numbers those numbers are the character id for the person you searched for okay so that's the easy way to get your character id okay so let me get rid of these here. Okay. So back to the revelation. You can, from there, like C3 acid, if you wanted to find out how much that, let's see, you can't do that from there. Let's, no. Can you do it from here either? No. Okay, yeah, because we're already, we're in, we're in the blueprints right now. Let's go back to the manufacturing. Okay. So if you look, this average price right here, that is pulled from the game. So right now, if you look at Tritanium and you look at this average price, what it is is that type, and it's, it's pulling from this item name right here. So it's B15, which is, or I'm sorry, C15. Oh, B15, so right here. It's pulling from this right here and getting that price from the game. Now, average price, let me make sure I get this right here. It's kind of confusing. So the average price is a number that CCP has that's averaged over 28 days. And if you notice the my price, I actually wrote that in, but the average price is kind of the average of Tritanium over the past 28 days. And so it, it may be different than what it currently is in game. However, that's a lot of what the, gate, the game uses. If you ever see adjusted price, the adjusted price is also called EIV, I believe, and that's estimated item value. When you're doing manufacturing, that's how the game decides how much you have to pay to install an item in the game. So let's go over this real quick. This Let's see if it will allow me to look up a market order. See if this works. So market orders. Oh, Jita is returns of market orders in the given region. Oh, it doesn't have try it out. 
Yeah, I'm not sure that that's active yet. It's here, but I don't know. Because market orders right now in ESI are turned off. So I'm not sure that that's available yet. I'm sure they want to get it back available. And anything else I can't talk about, but that's how you would get that data right there. But it's it doesn't look like it's turned on right yet. Okay, so those of you that, that use Eve Cookbook, this will look very familiar to you right here as far as making the revelation. And it would always give you that one little blurb about excess materials and how much it cost. This is the list of excess materials that it was taking and adding up that cost. And that's how it was giving you that cost, was basically adding these up. Okay? Anything else you can think of, Nick, that, that sounds pretty good? Or, all right. So I'm going to go to a second spreadsheet right now. And, well, we just make a new sheet here. We don't have to go to another one. We'll just start a new sheet and kind of play with some of the other parts for your character. Now, one thing you have to be kind of careful with is your inventory and your assets and stuff. But this will actually list out, now it says busy right now. I just clicked on character assets. But this lists every character asset that I have in game. Okay. And it's obviously a ton. He doesn't, Kenneth doesn't have a ton of stuff on him. But. You can move out here and we close this one and it will give you a location. So that's where my, I have a civilian miner in, oh, somewhere in Delve. Huh. Okay, and you can do the same thing here. We can take and copy this and go from here and go all the way down to the bottom. Now this may take a little bit, but go down to here and paste. And this will tell you now, like when it says this void S is in a catalyst, that means it's located in that catalyst. And then from there, what you would have to do is click here and go to a location ID. And then that location ID is that number there. And then from there, you would have to... I don't know. Yeah, that's not going to be in the groups or categories. So you're going to have to look up that ID and figure out actually where it's. We might be able to look here. Now, this is one thing that you can do. It's kind of, if you don't know what data you need here, let's get rid of this real quick. If you don't know what data you need, if you click on this void S and you get the little pop-up to come up and you want to see where it is or how much you have or whatever like you want to know the quantity all you have to do is click on quantity and that's what comes out there so then i can take this again hit control c i'm only going to do a little bit now i'm not going to do a whole mess of them but you hit control v and it would tell you the quantity so in some archon somewhere i have 82,450 helium topes in somewhere but this is something that, and the location IDs and stuff, you could have it come up to the numbers, but then you can make another chart that has the numbers and the systems in it, and then cross-reference that and have it actually fill in the location, like the system name or whatever, where it is. Now, if it's something that's in just on the floor, like this has KFIE, it's, I got some crystals there, I guess. I got a crow and villasin, but anything that's in a ship, then you would have to either that or you just scroll down until you find a munin somewhere, and then that's where it is. But so that part of it's kind of that's why I said you need to kind of be careful with it. But all that data is available to you in Excel. Character orders are pretty self-explanatory. Kind of doesn't buy anything off the market, so he's not going to have any orders or really any, any. he's definitely not going to have any industry jobs. He doesn't even have industry skills at all. Definitely doesn't have blueprints. Now, the inventory search, that's one I actually haven't tried yet. Hmm. 
it doesn't give let's see what comes up so equals eve online and character skills wallet balance oh okay so it's here but it's it doesn't look like it's available yet so so assets assets detail oh let's see what assets detail does oh all right so where is the detail so character assets oh that one's not in there so active character okay so kenneth feld so if i click on this it should have my id in here i think yeah there's my id so we'll click right here that's my that's my id that i'm looking for so then we'll go down here to equals eve online eve online and character assets detail so we'll double click there and then for this box it's going to want the character id so i can just click there and it will link to that box i think this works no it doesn't okay so what i need to do then is 1083 nine seven oh three seven five no okay yeah so that character assets detail i may not be using it right i don't know what that one is it's not in the it's not in the regular list so i'm not sure if it's active remember this is a beta i should have started off with that this is a beta so you know things maybe i don't want to say broken but things may not be fully implemented yet it's only been available like 48 hours so i'm sure it's going to be in beta for for quite a while quite a while a few weeks maybe a few months before it's available to everybody they may expand the beta i'm not really sure i they didn't really let the csm know their plans as far as that they just said hey it's going to be a beta once it's available, then there's no NDA restrictions on the actual beta part of it. Now, some of the things that they told us regarding the back end and that kind of stuff is definitely still covered under the NDA. So, yeah, so back to the name. Like I said, anything that you see that has a, another box there, you can definitely click on that and it will take you to the next thing. And then you can continue to go down that rabbit hole as far as you want. Now, one thing that's kind of weird, anywhere you see this little E, it says Powered by Eve Online. If you click that, it will open a browser window and take you to eveonline.com. So don't click on that unless you want to go to Eve Online. But it's a real quick way to go to the Eve Online website if you ever need to go there for some reason. But... The same thing, anything in here that you want to go, like the description or, you know, like the ID, all I have to do is, is double click on the ID or uh, on here and it will automatically fill that in. All right. I think that's about it that I was planning on going over for now. I mean, it's some of the stuff like the wallet transactions, I could show it to you, but I don't have any. At least I don't think I do. Oh, yeah, that's right. I just bought some plus threes because someone killed me in high sec because I am I have negative sec status. Yes, I had to buy some new plus threes and, uh, and a shuttle to make it, out of, make it out of high sec alive. Yeah, so if you look here, it tells you what it is. And I don't know. It probably tells you it just says a unit price. I don't know if it tells you what I paid for it or not. Let's see here. Location, owner, quantity, unit price. I don't know if that's the price I paid or that's the price they were or what. I'm really not sure. Let's see if this one comes up something different. Oh, yeah, that is probably the price I paid. Eh, I'm not really sure. But anyway, that's what's available for wallet transactions. Let's see if there's anything in the wallet journal. Oh. Yep. Okay. There you go. So that's the wallet journal. I just bought my four plus threes and a, and a shuttle to get out of Dodge. 
Wallet balance, we don't need to go over that, I'm sure. Actually, he doesn't have that much ISK on him, so I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. You click on there, that's what, 18 billion? Yeah, somewhere around there. Industry jobs, same type thing, except for I know he doesn't have any. NA, yeah. Character blueprints, if your character does have blueprints, then the same thing there. It should, oh wow, oh, I guess I have blueprints somewhere. Okay, so let's go down this rabbit hole. Where is this blueprint at? Let's see. Oh, it'll give you the ME of it. Outstanding. And the TE. So let's see. It's an ME10 Vexor blueprint somewhere. Location ID. Where would that be? Okay, so I'd have to look up that ID and find out where that is. Let's see if it gives me any useful information here. So base price, ID, item ID. It's in a hangar. I own it. I have two of them there with two runs, and they're 1020. Huh. Had no idea. Probably ought to find them and right click trash it or something. Same thing. Let's this Kestrel blueprint. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Learn something new. Kenneth has blueprints. You know what they are? They're probably ones that people have delivered to me in a, in a citadel. So when it get blow, so when it get blows up, then there's a kill mail or something. Anyway, all righty. I think we've done enough damage for one night. Thank you guys, all 20 of you, for sticking around for the almost the whole hour here and listening to me carry on. If you guys have any questions, I'm available on TIS in the Discord. Typically hang around the industry section. And I'm also on the official CSM Discord as well. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask like a, as you figured out this excel thing's kind of new for everybody the beta program was open back on the like the third of february you had to get your name in and they chose people they were absolutely inundated with requests and at this time as far as i know they're not taking any additional people if they do i'm sure they'll put out another email and or news item that talks about it and you can put your name in again if they do a second round i really have no idea what they're planning on doing but uh, as i play with this a little bit more we'll probably have another one of these in a week or two as i've gotten a little bit better and started making my spreadsheets so that it's a little more advanced and a, and a little bit better look into what's going on let me see let me get this off of here so we get back to the talking and stations Yep. So, yeah, as, as more information comes available or more things get activated, then, then we can go over a little more stuff. But that's all for now. You guys have a great night, and I'm out.